challenge to develop the common law to accommodate the ever-changing environment. So recently we saw the Supreme Court of Appeal asking to pronounce on whether a WhatsApp message in which a man indicated he would pay each of his children a million rand if he won 20 million rand, um, an enforceable contract or not. And that was what the court was asked to listen to. Uh, did, he, did they win? Well, no, they didn't, unfortunately. So they, are, they didn't get that million rand. But how, why and how is such a contract over WhatsApp binding? Let's talk to Demi Pretorius. She, of course, is an associate at law firm Adams and & Adams. And so she'll unpack the legal implications of contracts set up via social outlets and what it means to the South African law. Good to have you. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you very much for having me. It's lovely to be here. And, you know, this is a conversation that I think a lot of people want to know about. And, you know, these things, but you barely speak to people anymore. Everything is communicated, whether it be of WhatsApp, whether it be on email, whether it be on uh, text messages. This is how you speak to one another. But now, whether or not it's binding and legally binding or not is where we're at. So talk to us about this specific court case. What actually happened there? An anticipated judgment, and as you say, very relevant, um, particularly because technology is such an integral part of our daily lives. So relevant to everybody who makes use of WhatsApp, text messaging, social media in general. Um, in this court case, um, the lotto winner, winner multi-millionaire now, um, he sent a WhatsApp message to his, the mother of one of his minor children, yes. indicating that if he receives 20 million rand, he'll give 1 million rand to each of his children. And the <laughs> mother of the child took him up on that. <laughs> <laughs> as, she, as one would. As one would. <laughs> she decided to institute court proceedings, relying on that WhatsApp message to claim a million rand. The court looked at the facts of the matter and ultimately decided that the WhatsApp message did not constitute a binding agreement. It didn't constitute an offer um, to be bound by the terms of a contract. And that was based on the content of the message itself and the context in which it was written. So in this particular case, he had not said that he will give 20, he will give a million rand to each of his children. He said he can give if he receives. And he had made that statement after having won the 20 million rand. Mm -hmm. And almost as a denial of having won it. So throughout the court proceedings even, he had denied having won the lotto. The lotto. Yeah. <laughs> but, but he had won the lotto. But he had. <laughs> exactly. So, so, I mean, okay. So this, this, this case aside, because this is, we, we've seen the judgment, we know what has happened in all of this. Um, what is a legal agreement? I mean, if I, if I do WhatsApp as a matter of interest and I say to somebody, you know, I'm on my way to buy a lotto ticket, if I win, I will give you a million rand of that money. Um, I mean, I am basically okay. saying I will give <laughs> it to you. This person has it as evidence that they've said I will give it to them. Am I legally bound to give it to them? Yes. Um, so uh, the basic principle in our law is that for a contract to be valid, there must be consensus between the contracting parties. Between the two parties. Yes, so okay. there must be an agreement on specific terms um, of the contract. In our law, to determine whether there is consensus, we look at the rules of offer and acceptance, um, both of which require a declaration um, of an intention to be bound by a contract. And that declaration can be in writing, it can be made orally, or it can be made by conduct. Our law recognizes WhatsApp as being a valid means of communication and it satisfies the requirements of writing. Mm, mm. Um, so yes, if you send a WhatsApp message and it contains an offer and someone subsequently accepts that offer, you'll be bound by the terms of, yeah. of your expression. And so is that what we found happening in this particular case? Because what I'm reading here mm. is that on the 2nd of December, 
um, the Supreme Court of Appeal overturned that High Court decision, okay, as we know, and held that the WhatsApp message did not contain an offer that could, on acceptance thereof, be converted into an enforceable agreement. So right. it wasn't as simple as, if I win, I will give you the money. Obviously, in that WhatsApp message, it wasn't that straightforward. Is that what went wrong? Yes. Um, the WhatsApp message didn't contain an offer. Okay. Um, he didn't agree to anything, and he never had the intention to be bound by the agreement. Yeah, he yeah. said he could. If he wins, sometimes in, sometime in the future he wins 20 million rand. Yeah. He could give okay. some of that money away. Yeah. I could, but I'm not saying I yes. will. So it's very hypothetic. Very but, hypothetical. I mean, do you get these cases all the time? So we're talking about one case, which mm -hmm. I think a lot of us look at and, and we're interested in. But, you know, behind the scenes, what's actually happening? Are you finding that these cases are becoming more and more uh, prominent where there are promised things over WhatsApp, text messages, emails, whatever it may be, they have the proof and this actually works for them? What's stated in a WhatsApp message can definitely be raised in court. Um, so, yes, we do get many contracts that are established either by WhatsApp or by email. And the, co the courts have previously made pronouncements on that. We uh, recently had a case where um, someone tried to enforce an agreement that was or a variation of agreement that came about by an exchange of emails. And the court in that case referred to ICTA, the Electronic Communications and Transactions Act, and it says it's clearly stipulated in that act that any data message satisfies the requirement for writing. And um, even what, though it's not signed, even though you don't sign on the dotted line, <laughs> yeah. you can be held accountable for what's expressed in WhatsApp or over a DM in, on Instagram. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So you've got to be very careful very, very, what very you write cautious. down. I mean, you, it, it, this is becoming more and more blatantly clear, whether or not it's over social media, whether it be Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or if it's directly to somebody, whatever you say can and will be held against you <laughs> in a court of law. Exactly. I, that, that. that has now expanded much <laughs> further. Yes. If it's on your mind and you put it in writing, mm. you could get into trouble. And our laws are already adapted to that. We have certain established principles which um, our laws just adapted to accommodate these technological or electronic communications and I think the lesson to be taken is just that technology is important it has various advantages um, it allows us to communicate and to contract across provinces across borders mm. and um, it's just a platform that must be used responsibly. Indeed, um, indeed. So just be aware Could, that... Is there an expiration date? As in, if I had written an email, perhaps I am going through a divorce and mm. there is correspondence between my husband and myself at, at a time, maybe years ago, where things were stipulated and we spoke to each other when things were still nice. Mm. But then we're going through something. Is that still binding? Is there an expiration date uh, on these kind of things? No, just again, everything must be read in context. Okay. And you'll always look at the particular facts of each, um, of each case. There's no all-encompassing rule. Um, if there is an agreement, um, if there's offer and acceptance, yes, um, it, 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 it it doesn't matter when it happened, yeah. um, except for prescription. Our law does provide that a, that a claim prescribes after three years. So okay. if you want to hold someone accountable, make sure that you do so within, within three years. Within three years. I like that. Um, we, we were laughing. Vaila and myself were laughing at Sakina saying, what happens if a guy asks you to marry him over WhatsApp? <laughs> and then he changes his mind. Is that binding? Look, my thoughts on a man asking you to marry him over WhatsApp <laughs> is a problem. You need to up your levels a little bit. Is that binding? Um, so I must distinguish between a contract and an agreement. An yeah. agreement is just, um, just you and I can come to any sort of agreement. But for that agreement to have um, legal 
effect, yeah. there must be some sort of legal obligations that cr that's created as a as a result thereof. Yeah. Um, and also, you can't enter an, into an agreement that is not recognised in law or that is not. Um, that's illegal. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> so, like a job offer as well. If you get the offer over a WhatsApp or a messaging, is that good enough? It's good enough, provided that, um, that there's an unequivocal acceptance of that offer and there's no modification. Yeah. And, of course, I mean, um, an offer of employment is a bit more complicated. Um, there are certain rules, regulations, statutes that, um, that regulate an employment agreement. You'll have to, to look a bit further um, than just the message. You'll, yeah. you'll have to make sure that you operate within the law. Fantastic. Listen, thanks for talking to us. The bottom line is we all need to study law. Whether we like <laughs> it or not, we need to know because uh, these little things that we're holding in our hands these days, they, they're weapons and they can be weapons of mass destruction to yourself, unfortunately. Demi Pretorius, an associate at law firm Adams and Adams, helping us unpack if a WhatsApp message or any other form of message, whether it be over Instagram, Facebook, you name it, is it legally binding or not? Let's take a break. We'll see you after this.